I'm sorry about that. I'm still learning. Thank you for your patience with me. I started by saying, I have a calamity wear mug. I'm having tea today. And this tea is, this tea is in a beautiful mug that looks like a lovely Dutch pattern, but instead it is calamity wear. So it features all kinds of things. It features robot apocalypse. This is hard to do in a mirror image, so bear with me. This features a pterodactyl attack. This features Bigfoot running wild through a town. It features a giant frog. Thank you, Will. Thanks, Carolyn. Thanks, Celeste. It features a frog monster after people. It features a whoops, a poor, poor fisherman out in the water with a huge octopus tentacle reaching up. It features a big sea monster, and then for those who are fans of the uh, Doctor Who, it features something that I don't think is a Dalek, but I like to think of it as a Dalek. This is Calamity Wear, and I like it because it makes me laugh. It gives me a smile in difficult times, and it's a reminder that we can go through difficult times with a smile on our face, that we can have technical problems and many other kinds of problems and still prevail, that that we can laugh sometimes at our own difficulties and we can find hope. And stories of hope is what I wanted to talk about today. When my kids were little, and now it's a big deal in our house because we have grandkids, we read a lot of books to them and our children are doing the same. And so I have some that were big favorites. One is probably familiar to all of you, The Little Engine That Could. This is a really old edition. This might even be from my childhood that now I've shared with my kids and now they'll share with their grandkids. And if you followed this, then you know that the theme of this story is the little engine saying, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And then saying, I knew I could, I knew I could, I knew I could. It teaches that lesson much better than just saying, have some faith in yourself, you'll make it. When they got a little older, we enjoyed the wind in the willows. This is a book about animals in the woods and by the riverbank, and they have adventures. They are flawed creatures. Mr. Toad is vain and impulsive. Others are shy. Others have many other characteristics. And what these stories teach is the beauty of nature, the beauty of all creatures, and also how important it is to know that we can be loved and cared about even when we mess up, even when we are difficult people. So those are some of the stories from childhood. I have stories that I turn to when I need to find comfort or escape or some other things. Some are the mystery novels of Louise Penny. I love them very much. I commend them to you. The other is, of course, The Lord of the Rings. And most people who know me know that that's probably only the Bible have I read more. But I love those stories, those ones that I just said, because they are both, both authors write about the grace that comes in unexpected places, and that good is possible even when it seems like the bad is going to prevail. It brings hope, and that's what I appreciate about it. Of course, the text that brings me the most hope is the Bible. The Bible is a lot of things to the people who read it. There's a lot of things to the people who see it as scripture and as law and as prophecy, but the Bible has come to us for a very specific set of reasons. And I'm going to scroll a verse from Paul about what the Bible can be to us. And it will be on in just a moment. I'm going to make it go just a little faster. Oh, maybe not that fast. The verse of the day today is, For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the, through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. I'll leave that up for a moment just so you can think through it again. The Bible is really, beyond all the other things that it is, primarily a book of stories about God and people. It is more valuable to us because it is a book of stories. It's not just a bunch of laws we have to memorize. It's not just a bunch of descriptions of how we've sinned and fallen short of the glory. Instead, God's story comes to us in the form of stories themselves, stories that we know and love, stories that we've taught to our kids, stories that many of us have memorized, stories that really have the power to change our lives. Let me take that down now. 
these stories our favorites. So many of us have as among our favorite stories, the birth and the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus and the many stories about Jesus and the many stories that Jesus told, the parables, the way that he taught was absolutely based in stories. There are other parts of the Bible that may also be your favorites. A lot of people like the story of Jonah and the whale, and there are other tales of many sorts. There's Ruth, there's Esther, there's lots of others. Some of the stories are bigger, like the story of Jesus. One of them is the story of the Exodus, when the people of Israel were made into a people by the love of God and led into freedom, led out of enslavement and into a new life, into a promised land. Our Jewish friends just celebrated that event just a, just a week ago in Passover, as they thought about the meaning of that freedom for today. Another set of stories that's perhaps a little less popular because it's long, it's involved, and it's not so triumphal, particularly not at first, is the story of the exile of the people of God, the exile in Babylon. It's told, it's chronicled in the book of Second Chronicles, but it is also told through Jeremiah as well as through Isaiah and many of the other prophets. What happened in 597 BC and went on until 538 BC, 59 years, was that the people of God fell away from the worship of God. They stopped relying on God for protection. They started to rely on their own selves, but yet believed that God would not dare do anything bad to his beloved promised people, that he would never undo the promises that he had made. Now, it's true that God's promises endure forever, but it's also true that when you take down a lightning rod, then lightning can strike your house. And when the people of Israel took away the protection of God. They lost that protection. Babylon overran Jerusalem, and Jeremiah in real time narrated the fall of the city, the tearing down of the temple, and the carrying away of most of the people into exile in Babylon, where they lived as slaves for almost 60 years. In that time, they wondered if because they had lost the land that God had given them, they had also lost God. They wondered if they would ever find their way back. They wondered how they would ever understand that. Jeremiah, who had taken refuge in Egypt, sent the messages at first saying, you understand why this has happened, don't you? You have been ignoring God. You need to stop ignoring God. But then later he began to send them messages from God, prophetic messages. I'm going to put this one up, not scrolling, about what God intends for God's people. And the messages of Jeremiah said, For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. <clears throat> the judgment of God has turned from a judgment of exile to a judgment of love, because that is how it is. Now, these messages, this particular scripture is our theme for this year. Who knew how appropriate it would be when we chose it way back last fall? But it is the promise of hope and a future that we need right now, because these are hard times. And sometimes we feel exiled from one another, from all the things we used to do, from all the ways we used to be. We, felt, we feel that we've been cut off. We don't know how to plan for the future. We don't know what shape the future will have. Will it be the same? Will it be different? What will be different? We turn on the TV and there's so much conflicting bad news that most of us turn it off and say, well, maybe I'll turn on something funny or look at something else. Maybe I'll get out my calamity wear mug and just think about how calamity can still be overcome. This is what God wants us to do, actually, is to think hard about the promises that have come, not in the best of times, but most specifically for the hard times. Hope can seem hard to have, but hope is there. It is already there. And hope is what gives life in hard times. Hope is what we can hold on to when things really are confusing and difficult and hard. It has always been the case for people in the Bible and in our own lives. The hope that we are beloved the hope that we are more than our worst moments and our struggles. The hope that God's love is stronger than death, 
stronger than anything that can happen to us. And in the life of Jesus, we know that that is true. So I thought I would play you an inspirational song. We've heard it um, at communion back on Monday, Thursday, but I'd like to play it again. Jim Wilking, accompanied by his in-house accompanist, Nancy, singing, Come My Way, My Truth, My Light. And I want to read those words to you just so that you have them as you listen to it so that you can think back on them. This is from our New Century hymnal. Come my way, my truth, my life. Such a way as gives us breath. Such a truth as ends all strife. Such a life as conquers death. Come my way, light, my feast, my strength. Such a light as shows a feast. Such a feast as men's in length. Such a strength as makes a guest. Come my joy, my love, my heart. Such a joy as none can move, such a love as none can part, such a heart as joys in love. And now let's hear this beautiful song written by Rayfon Williams and sung by James Wilking. truth, my life, such a way as gives us breath, such a truth as ends our strife, such a life as My strength, such a light as shows a feast, such a feast as man's in length, such a strength as makes his guest. mystical song that really speaks of the power of love, the life-giving power of love. The other thing that is life-giving, the other power we believe in as people of God is prayer, that we can talk to God with the confidence of children, that we can come before God with the things that we need and the things that we fear. And so I invite you now to join your heart with mine in prayer. Loving God, on this rainy day, help us to remember to give thanks for the rain, to give thanks for the way that the world keeps on going, even when we feel like our world has stopped. We give thanks for the gifts of nature, even as we acknowledge that within nature are things like viruses that threaten us. O oh God, you are bigger than all of the things. You are the creator of all nature. You have power over it all. Most importantly, your power of love sustains us all and carries us through the difficult times and causes us to take actions for the sake of others and allows us to share, <coughs> share our hearts and our lives with one another and with you. For this we thank you, O God, and with the confidence of your children, we come before you in prayer. We pray this day for all the people who are sick we are well aware of pandemic threats, pandemic difficulties, <coughs> and of the way that many people are suffering and dying. We know that 
you bring people through even when they cannot be healthy. And so we ask that you keep your people well, that you keep their souls intact, that you lift up their hearts, that for those who struggle to breathe, who have no energy, who wonder if this disease will be the end of them, you provide comfort and companionship and community even when people must be alone. We pray for the families of those who are sick and for the families of those who have died of this COVID-19, but also of many other things, of many other causes. God, our lives are fragile. Sometimes we don't like to think about how fragile life is, and yet in its fragility, it is precious. And so help us to care most truly for one another, to speak our love to one another, to share what can be shared, to care in the ways that we can care, so that as we experience the fragile end of life, we know that we have said and done what we need to. God, we can't always do those things, and so forgive us when we fall short of your glory, when we fall short of the things that you would have us do, and instead strengthen us to carry on in the mission that Jesus has given us, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, to feed and clothe and house those who do not have clothing or food or homes, to care for the sick and the dying, to care for those who are hopeless and helpless, to look after the last and the least of these, knowing that this is the form in which Christ may come among us. O oh God, forgive the times that we turn away from one another, the times that we fall short of the image in which of you that we are created in, of the times when we fail to recognize the preciousness of one another, and instead turn us towards one another, Show us the ways that we can connect even now. Show us the things that we can say to one another that will bring comfort and hope. Show us the ways that we may love and serve our world, even in isolation. Show us that we are never truly isolated, that we are one in your love, and that in your love we are held close to your great heart and to the hearts of all humanity. O oh God, we ask your blessings on those who go into danger every day for the sake of the rest of us, for the policemen and the firemen, for the first responders, for the doctors and the nurses, for all the people who work in hospitals, for the caregivers in nursing homes, for those who tend the sick, who change their sheets, who turn them over, who do the things that they cannot do for themselves. Oh God, we give you thanks and ask that you strengthen those people and that they feel the weight of our prayers lifting them or the lightness of our prayers lifting them up and moving them beyond the difficulties of the present moment, knowing that they are called in your service. God, show us how we may be in your service. Show us how we may do acts of love and care. Show us how we may help to transform the world into your kingdom. We ask all of these things and so much more in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for being with me and thank you with your patience. I thought that I was going live, but apparently it was just a test screen and I appreciate the comments that help me to do better each time. We'll be meeting again on Sunday morning at 1030. I'll give some extra time at the beginning for people to get signed on, as my wonderful friends and executive council have suggested. We'll try to share some concerns of the congregation. So if you have some concerns you'd like me to share, please message them to me or contact me in one of the many ways that exist, including the comments section of this broadcast. We will also try having a virtual message board coffee hour at the end of our worship time on Sunday, where I'll leave things open with a visual and you can post to the comments, greetings to one another and sharing. I'm still trying to figure out how people do a Zoom coffee hour. Stay tuned. We may yet do those things because it would be nice to talk and visit. I love and miss all of you. I know that we miss one another. We miss the gathering together. We miss the energy that we gain from one another, the hugs that we can give. And as we wonder how this will be looking ahead, understand that God is with us, that even if there is tremendous change, even in times of turmoil and unknowing, 
The peace of God passes all understanding and the peace of God can fill our hearts. And so as we pray for one another, as we care for one another, as we do the acts of kindness, as we write the cards and make the calls and sew the masks and do so many other things, know that God is with us. Go forth in peace and joy to love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen.